but ultimately it's about building a system. So exactly what you talked about at the start for being a high performance, what is my framework of what will give me the best chance to feel good and to live a long, healthy life. But from that point on, that's not set in stone. Like, for example, you said, if you want to have a piece of cheesecake, like, you know, when I'm older, when I'm a parent, if I have a daughter and she wants to have cake on her birthday and she wants me to have it with her, I'm going to have a piece of cake. Like, Dude, I know it's full of sugar Mexico, and oil. If, right? if you go to Mexico in an all-inclusive with your girlfriend and family and, you know, they're like, hey, do you want a coconut? Yeah. You know, you know like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You're about the tree. Do you want, you know, a fresh pineapple? We just went to pick it this morning. Yeah, sure. You know, like, it's it's okay. Learn to perform practical lessons so that you can immediately learn to optimize your health, happiness, and performance. Welcome to the first ever Learn to Perform interview. I'm your host, Braden Ostepchuk, and I'm thrilled to introduce our guest today, Zach Fucali. Zach is a professional hockey goaltender currently under contract with the Washington Capitals of the NHL. I'm sure many of you will be familiar with Zach as he has already had an illustrious career despite being just 25 years old. Here's a quick rundown. Zach began his junior hockey career with the Halifax Mooseheads of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, making an immediate impact by setting the league record for wins by a rookie, eventually surpassing the great Jean-Sebastien Jaguer for most wins in franchise history and later becoming the youngest goalie to ever surpass 100 career wins. In 2013, Zach helps lead the Mooseheads to QMJHL and Memorial Cup championships being named to the all-tournament team in the Memorial Cup. While in junior, Zach also represented Canada at the U18 and World Junior Championships, winning a gold medal in each. In 2015, Zach was the World Junior Championships top goaltender, helping Canada end a five-year gold medal drought. As a top prospect, Zach was then drafted in the second round by the Montreal Canadiens and has since appeared in nearly 200 professional games. In addition, he has represented Canada in three Spangler Cups, winning gold twice and being named an All-Star in 2019. For those who may not follow hockey very closely, let me say that this is an incredible career so far. And having watched Zach play firsthand in the ECHL during one of my brief stops in the Blue Post League, I can vouch that he is incredibly talented. And it was just one time that I saw you play Zach, so only once. But off the ice, Zach is equally impressive, if not more so. Zach co-founded Living Sisu, a company dedicated to educating people about the importance of daily physical activity, as well as making it more accessible to all. In addition to the company, he has been an active voice in the community and podcasting, using his platforms to spread positive messages and share valuable information. He has worked extremely hard to build up a community that aligns directly with the values here at Learn to Perform, helping people to optimize their health, happiness, and performance. From getting to know Zach, I can tell you he is an avid reader and obsessed with maximizing his health and performance. He's a great personality and a wealth of knowledge. So with that, I am thrilled to welcome our guest, Zach Fucali. Zach, welcome to the show. Jesus, thanks, man. How you doing? <laughs> that was uh, by far the best introduction I've ever gotten ever since uh, I'm on this planet, man. That's awesome. Thank you oh. for having me on your show. Yeah, of course. Well, I just wrote that up in the last 20 minutes, so I'm glad that you appreciated that. And, <laughs> wow, and hope- that's, uh, that's, quite the, that's quite the feat, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> and hopefully I got everything correct. Uh, I may have been, I was I using Wikipedia to be completely honest, so sometimes <laughs> you don't know. I, I, I didn't hear or, no, everything sounded pretty good. Okay. I don't know. Maybe All right. I don't know. Maybe it sounded too good. Too good. No, nonsense. I'm on a pedestal here, man. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to have to deliver in the next uh, 40 or 50 minutes, oh, however good, long man. this I'll goes. I'll do my best. All right. So obviously there's a lot of different things that I want to talk to you today about. And in this show, a lot of it comes down to performance and how we can optimize our life. And when I think of performance, and when I have this conversation with people, there seems to be a lot of, you know, not necessarily disagreement, but confusion of what constitutes performance. And I wanted to ask for your perspective from someone who has been in high performance and high demanding environments, you know, throughout your entire hockey career and in your life, what does it mean to you to be a high performer? Like, what does that look like? I mean, that's, that's so good. I mean, being able to deliver in high pressure situations, you know, and, and there's another aspect to that, like just the fact that you could deliver to your team, or if you're an individual sport, being able to hit that top performance or really hit your peak at the right time, that's, that's being able to to perform at at uh, against anybody or any team or any level, right? That's that's huge. But there's a little component there uh, in that question where sometimes we don't feel 100% that day, right? And being a high performer, you find a way. That's that's to me that's super big in this answer and this whole kind of conversation is 
we don't always feel 100%. You don't have the perfect practice week. You don't have the perfect workout. Sometimes you get hurt. Sometimes, I don't know, the, the dog was sick at night. You got to get up. You don't get your full eight hours sleep or, you know, there's a million things that, how about this? Life happens, you know, life happens, right? So at the end of the day, being a high performer, you deliver no matter the situation, no matter how you feel, um, pressure, no pressure, fans, no fans. That's, that's being a high performance, you know, athlete to me, or just whether you're a business guy or anything like that, that's, that's high performance to me. Right. Exactly. So getting the job done, especially in a professional setting, we talk, you talk about you being a professional hockey player, but you could talk about someone who's a lawyer and they're in the courtroom, or you could talk about a business person on wall street. At the end of the day, you have a task to complete and you need to complete that task. Right. And whether you're working with a team or by yourself, you know, you got to be able to adapt and shift and move and, 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 you know, there, there's, there's opponents there. There's people you're working with and against and stuff like that. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's quite the conversation to be honest and a high performer, a high performance human being or athlete, you know, he'll find a way or she will find a way that's the, those are the top athletes. Right. I absolutely love that. And I know, I think someone that you follow is Tim Grover and he talks about being relentless and being a cleaner. Yeah. And when he talks about the LeBron James and the Kobe Bryant's, I think that's kind of almost a little bit of the vibe that I'm getting from that. At the end of the day, you find a way to deliver. So I think a great point that you mentioned is the whole idea that there is so much uncertainty that's going to happen. And there's going to be so much adversity, just life, like no matter what uh, profession you're in or what you're trying to accomplish, you're going to have some sort of roadblocks that you can't predict. So the goal then in many ways that I seem to at least take this perspective. And it sounds like you probably are on the same idea is that the goal is to try and optimize your performance to be adaptable and just give yourself the best opportunity to succeed given the circumstances. So what do you think are a few of the key pillars to being a high performer or what are the most important things to try to give yourself the best chance of being able to perform? Yeah. And, and that's, that's obviously different for everybody. And we'll probably all of all your guests, everybody will have a different answer to this, but to me, comes down to I've been war- I've been using this this word a lot in the last few um, I'm gonna say months and maybe a couple of years now. You need a system, and and to me that really eliminates a lot of the human errors that we make, all of the stupid little mental mistakes we make, all the stuff that, for example, um, all the all the stuff we're talking about, like where life happens and there's there's unexpected situations and stuff like that. If you have a system to fall back on proper training to really, really get those pillars that you're asking me about. If you have solid pillars in your system that are, that work for you, you're going to eliminate a lot of those little stupid mistakes that you would make on any given night that you're not feeling as good because the system will save you. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's really about finding specific things for me as a goaltender, there, there's specific things. And, and you'd know this, like I'll just give an example, like um, some goalies put a lot of emphasis on their positioning, where exactly where they have to be in the crease at a certain given time and situation or whatnot. Well, if there's a goalie that has that, those rules, you know, those, those set of rules for positioning, for example, on a night that he's not feeling as good or whatever, if he falls back on his positioning, well, he's giving himself the best chance at this very moment because he has those rules. But if he didn't or she didn't have these rules. If you're feeling off that night, where do you go? What do you fall back on? Right? What do exactly. you do? You know, so to me, it's worked very well for me uh, in the last few years, just falling back on a system that I trust, and it works for me. And the pillars for me are really about my tracking, my head movement, my, my, my patience, and just being set on every puck, just limiting my movements, not being not doing too much, not trying to overextend, not trying to move. And when I do those things, I know that I'm eliminating all those little mistakes Mm -hmm. that would happen where sometimes you're too aggressive. So finding a system that really works for you, that's going to eliminate those little, little mistakes that you make. To me, that's, that's number one pillar in high performance. You have to have a system. It's not about superstition. It's not about a specific routine or what you eat for lunch. To be honest It's when you get in the game, what are your key points that you focus on for your system? You know, you systemize stuff. 
Yeah, I, I absolutely love that. I couldn't agree more. And from personal experience, going back to the hockey and being a goaltender, I can tell you that at the lowest parts of my career and when I was in leagues where I was really struggling at times, it was usually because you're trying to overcompensate and you're doing too much. And then so you leave that structure. And so, for example, the whole idea of position, you know, you at least fall back on the fact, well, if I put myself in a position, I'm giving myself an opportunity to make the save in this situation. And I know there are right. times where I would be swimming all over the place. And that's usually when the red light starts going off, you know, right, I mean? right, right. Because you lose control and you lose that foundation. And it's, it's funny because one situation or in one instance where you lose a part of your framework or part of your foundation, one pillar falls, it's like a domino, the rest of them all go. So if let's go back to like the hockey analogy, we talk about positioning. So all of a sudden, let's say there's a wide man rush or something and I'm overplaying a guy going wide and there's a passer. But the moment I overplay that, and then let's say there's a pass or there's a rebound, then you're the way on I adjust, one, then you're late on it. Second right, one. exactly. Yeah. You're late on the next thing. And then my tracking is behind and then I'm opening up holes and then I'm losing my form and then I'm losing my balance. And then right. it's like, everything starts falling down. And so, then the, the percentages of every single play, they just go right up instead of you being, you know, in control. So right, exactly. no, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And this could apply to so many different things. Like, uh, lately I've been reading a lot about, you know, different types of investments and stuff, but these people, there's people that do it all day long, but they have a system. They say, okay, well, this company, when these numbers look like this, oh, that's not a good idea. We shouldn't go there. I want mm-hmm. to, but we don't because we're falling on our rules. You know, we could say system, but we can also go with rules, you know, a certain set of rules that, you know, with yourself by taking notes, by watching video, by, by, by experience, by, knowing the feeling of what that gives you, you realize that when I do this, okay, maybe sometimes it feels good. You know, it's a nice flashy save, but the percentage at the end of the day in the long term, that's not what's going to bring me success. You know, this is the way uh, to, 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 to play the situation. You put the percentage on your side. A, right. a lot of stuff that we're doing in terms of high performance, a lot of it is, you know, high you play the percentages properly, you play them smartly, and then you add on all the other extra things you do in your life. Now you're, now you're to kind of set yourself up for success. Now, now you're talking about really putting the, the edge on your side. Because if you have a system, I'll give you an example. If you have a system as a goalie that you know 100%, you're going to stop 90% of the shots. 90% as a goaltender is, is a little bit below average. You know, yeah, now, Nowadays, it's a little bit below average. Let's say we go at 91.5%. Now you're talking about average to above average at 91.5%. But mm-hmm. if you have a system that will almost, I'll say almost, but almost guarantee you 90% of saves, all you need to do is get 1.5% better than those guys, which is maybe we're talking about five, six goals in the year. And you're above average all of a sudden, 1.5%. So that's where you go get it. And you know your sleeping habits and all these other things where you get to the game and you're just a little bit sharper, 1.5% better than the others. And all of a sudden, boom, you have those extra saves, four, five, six, seven extra saves in the year that makes that difference. You know what I'm talking about? But at least you have that base, that fundamental, those, those, that brick kind of foundation that gives you that minimum. And then you go up from there from all your other habits and your other kind of gifts and talents that you have in, 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 in your life. That's, that's how I've been looking at it. And, uh, since I started looking at it that way, I've made a lot less mistakes and I'm, I'm more consistent. And I find that I just rely on things I trust most. And, and I think that's a real good lesson that if somebody, if one person realizes this, that it helps them, then I'll, I'll be happy. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's phenomenal. I think you hit the nail on the head because we can apply this to everything. So obviously in hockey, you kind of laid it out for everyone as a goaltender's perspective. But I mean, you talk about finance and investing. It really is about playing the odds because let's say even for someone who's investing in the stock market, you're not going to win every buy or sell. You know, sometimes you're going to lose, but sometimes you're going to win. It's about if you go by chance, exactly. Oh, you're going to lose. We already know that. (laughs) You know what I mean? But it's about giving yourself the best opportunity to succeed, the best probability, and then the aggregate of those decisions over and over again accumulates into long-term success, which is what it's all about. Like we're trying to achieve long-term success. Like, and I think the great thing that you mentioned about being in the hockey career, so you talk about the difference between being good or being great as a goaltender, whether it's junior or professional, we're talking about five, six goals spread out throughout a season. 
So like it's small, small it's increments make the difference. Yeah. And that's the difference between getting called up, getting sent down, getting drafted, getting not drafted. Like that's From making 500 you break your to career. 4 million or 5 million. If exactly. We're, we're going that route, right. You know so I mean? absolutely. now that we're on this shift and I'm actually glad I watched a few years ago, a video, I think it was Nashville's goalie coach at the time. And he was working with UC Saros and Pekka Rene. And he mm-hmm. was talking mm-hmm. about in practice that their objective was not about stopping every puck their objective was how do we get 1% better? And that's it. Because in the NHL, for example, and you know this as well as anyone being around that level all the time, 1%, just like you had said, that's the difference between winning a Stanley Cup and missing the playoffs. That's the difference between having a 15 year career and retiring, Yeah. right? So when we start moving and shifting the conversation now to high performance habits, and you started mentioning dialing in your sleep, dialing in nutrition, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like you're wearing blue light blocking glasses right now. Yes, sir. Those are my little less intense ones. The other ones, you know, I didn't want to get them in. Right. uh, Yeah. But that, I mean, I've got mine over there. I didn't want to put them on, but um, so let's talk a little bit about then what are some of your high performance habits? So maybe if you could just dive into a few of the things that are the most important and a few tips and tricks you have, and what are you doing now since you've shifted your mindset to those little percentage tweaks that are going to help you optimize your life that have helped you already take your performance and your game to the next level and what you're going to drive with you to continue your career going forward. Uh, that's, that's good. I mean, I, I, over time I've experienced with a lot, you know, I've, I've, I love to learn about this. I don't know if you could tell, I, got, I, <laughs> I travel with a lot of books and, and I, I love to learn about this and, just a human body. Uh, when I was in junior, before I, I turned pro, I was studying neuroscience. So I was really wow. trying to always look at different things to, 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 to learn about the human body, the brain and all that. So um, for me, the little things that I really appreciated the most was all the benefits from having a really tight sleeping routine. I, I, I love to learn about sleep and the effects and all of a sudden you, you, you have one more beer with your friends and oh, you're off for a couple of days. And now you realize you really, really, you see it, you know, you see it with the whoop band, you see all these things, you physically feel totally different. Something's off, but it's not, it's not by chance. Like now with science and all that, we can really understand exactly what's going on. So sleep to me was, was a huge shift that, uh, by learning a lot, I've, 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 felt much better over time by really dialing that in and learning about it and having some good sleep hygiene stuff. Like for example, the light, I think the light is, is kind of an underrated thing. Like people will, will not realize that, you know, you're watching TV at eight, nine, 10, you're watching a movie and you're like, "Ah, yesterday I didn't sleep too good. Well, okay, well let me go to bed again. But you do it again. And then you don't really sleep 100. You slept all right, but not great. But then over time, you know, we're talking about 1% that accumulates over time. And, and anyway, so I don't want to digress too much on sleep, but what I'm saying is to me, that was one of the big ones that I've, I've read up on, on a lot. Um, during the season, I, I, I love to just spend a lot of time stretching, just, just stretching, just moving my body. And I feel that that's going to help over time when, in terms of uh, durability and longevity of your career and just your overall life, you know, you feel better when your body can move, you know, when, when you can move and, you're not super tight all the time. You're getting up and you're like, you know what I mean? Um, so stretching for me, I've been putting a lot of emphasis on that in the last few years. And um, those are those are just two quick ones that we can talk about. But right now I got my feet on a grounding mat and I have the blue light blockers on and, and all these things are a little bit more scientific, but um, there's a lot of different things that, uh, what about you? What, what are the ones you you like off the top of your head to, biohack your way to you know what I mean <laughs> yeah no off the top of my head I agree with you 100% about the sleep so that's one that I really started diving into the science this summer and especially the book why we sleep by Dr. Matthew Walker unbelievable was a game changer right and if, if, if people haven't read that I I think it should be mandatory like these mm-hmm. things like there's there's a, there's a few books that I've read that are like how come no everybody right it? know this like everybody <laughs> should know this so if you don't if you haven't read why we sleep by uh, what's the name again matthew walker matthew walker you 100 you have to go you you it's it should be mandatory in schools in my opinion there's another one but it'd be a little bit more controversial nowadays to me a sacred cow is mm-hmm. it should be mandatory lecture for everybody and, and mm-hmm. it's really educating yourself on all these different topics whether they're controversial or not read up on the information yourself and make a critical analysis of really what's going on and uh, by reading up and researching you know unbiased stuff you're going to find the truth in that and and 
nutrition, if we want to go that route, that's super controversial nowadays. But honestly, right. I, I don't believe it should be. We should have a conversation about all these things. And even things that seem to be obvious for some are not for others. So it's got to be a conversation. For me, nutrition has been a big cha game changer in my life and my family's life. My father, who's had some, some health issues in the past and all that, it's all resolved. And it doesn't really work out. So we can't say it was exercise, you know, nutrition mm -hmm. really, really dialed it in for him and, and all millions of people around the world. So for me, sleep and, and, you know, just doing low level exercise, you don't have to kill yourself in workouts. You honestly don't have to little bit at a time, little bit at a time, good stretching regimen. And, uh, you eat right. You eat, you eat clean. You eat what we've been eating for millions of years and you're going to be fine. You know, you're going to feel good. Yeah, no, absolutely. I 100% I agree with that. And for the longest time, I used to think that nutrition was probably the most important. But after really diving into more sleep science, I honestly do think sleep might be the number one for me. Nutrition, definitely number two. Another thing that I'll add in that I've loved doing is intermittent fasting, and even occasional prolonged fasts. I found that that's really helped with just how I feel, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, and even just how yeah. I've been able to manage my body and my physique. Obviously, I started doing that post hockey career. So it's a little bit of a different situation. And I do want to go more into the nutrition. I, I promised you we'd talk about that a little oh, bit later. Cool. <laughs> I'm but, fine with that. But first, I know you were talking about grounding. And this was something that I first discovered when I was reading Boundless, which is Ben Greenfield's book. And I'm sure you're very familiar with Ben awesome. Greenfield. He's yeah. kind of, you know, the ultimate biohacker. And he's got a hundred and, and a, you know, hundred million different things Gadgets that he does. Gadgets and stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And so I, I'm kind of curious on, on that tech side. And, on, you know, not everyone may have access to this, but like grounding, you know, we don't all have grounding mats that we can use in a hotel room. But when it's not winter and even when it is, you know, you can always walk barefoot in the grass. You can walk barefoot in the dirt. You know, there are ways that we can do these things. We can get more sunlight. We can get more fresh air. We can always be moving. You know, we don't have to be doing a Zach Fucali stretching regimen to keep our body limber and healthy. So what are a few other things that maybe are lesser known, you know, like a grounding mat, for example, that a lot of people probably aren't familiar with, or, you know, even the blue light glasses you talk about, are there a few other things that you little tricks up your sleeve that you have that you do for those that 0.1% well, or that 1%? Man, I'm, I'm not a doctor. Okay. I'm not, I don't pretend I'm a doctor. I've read a lot. I have knowledge, but I'm not, I don't know everything. Okay. But there's mm -hmm. one thing I know, and I haven't really shared this on other podcasts or anything like that, other than like around the family, you know, table, you know, with, as we're having dinner, but I do somebody, I don't know who kind of said this, but it really resonated to my core. You know, like I remember it exactly how he said, like the human body is it's pretty perfect. And like, obviously we don't, we're not Iron Man. Like we can get killed. Like you, you get hit by a car, you know, you're done. But what I'm saying is the human body is going to tell you exactly what it needs. Like if you're sitting at home and you don't go outside, you're probably going to feel a little bit shitty. But what that means is it means your body wants to go outside. It needs sunlight. It needs fresh air. It needs to move. Like it's not, it's not, it's not a coincidence. I'll give you another example. Like if you don't eat all day, you're going to, you're going to be hungry, right? Your body's saying like, we should eat, you know, and eat until you're full. That's all those hormones, all these things in our body. Like they're, they're just telling you what the body needs. If you're mm -hmm. tired, you know what that means, Brayden? Just go to bed. That's what it means. Like you're tired. That that's all it means. If you're thirsty, drink water. Like those are all obvious things. Okay. But if we just listen to what the body's saying all the time, you're going to feel great. The only time we start feeling like garbage is we start eating really bad. We're not sleeping as much as we should. We're not moving our body. We're not going outside. And then people are wondering like, oh, you know, I'm, oh man, I gained a few pounds. I don't feel as good. You're just not listening to yourself. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's my perspective. I'm not a doctor. I don't pretend I'm a doctor. I'm just saying if you use a little bit of looking around and, and, and analyzing what's going on. If you go outside, you get sunlight, you move, you, you, you hang out with family. Oh, another thing is, you know, like all human beings in, in a lifetime, we, you know, we feel lonely sometimes. Like we feel like we're anxious. We need to be with, you know what that means? It means like you should hang out with friends more. You should be with your community. You should go out and laugh and have a beer and enjoy yourself. You know what I mean? That's what it means. Like the human body is going to tell you if you're feeling kind of anxious and like really full of anxiety, maybe you got a little bit too much going on in your life or there's something you need to figure out. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, absolutely. These, 
these are all little messages that I, in my opinion, we just got to listen to ourselves, you know, and, and if we do that, we sleep, right, we eat good, we go outside, like these are not biohacks, these are just basic things we should all do. Until I always say at my house, you know, we have a couple of rules, if you're hungry, eat, you know, we're Italian at our house. So everybody <laughs> eats at my house, everybody eats. And if you're hungry, you eat and you eat until you're full. It doesn't matter. We're going to give you more food. That's how we are the Italians, right? You eat until you're full and that's it. But I understand that fasting and I've done it and it feels really amazing, but it's not something that's going to change your whole life. Like if you're hungry, eat, that's fine. You know, that that's how we're made. And, and if you're not hungry for a day because you ate three pounds of steak, that's fine. Just wait till you're hungry again. It seems super basic and people are probably asking themselves like, what's he talking about? But in terms of biohacks and all of that, like you could do all these things to kind of top up and supplement. And I'm totally for it. I've done them all. I've done all the diets. I've, I've done all the little tips and tricks and bought all these gadgets. But at the end of the day, you just got to listen to yourself. Do the little things that all human beings should be doing, you know, in abundance, you know, sleep, hang out with family, go outside, exercise. You know what I'm saying? you do those things, I'm pretty confident you're going to feel good. Does that, does that make sense to you? Does that make sense at all? Oh, hundred percent. Because I think what I'm hearing the most in that, and it goes right back to the very start when you're saying, you know, we should be listening to our body and that the body is the most amazing thing. I mean, we think about what the body can do. Like you get a cut, it's just going to heal itself on its own. Like, and the more like I know I've read and I'm not a doctor either, but the more I read the science and literature and the more I learn about the human physiology and the way the body works, it is mind blowing. Like we are not going to be able to replicate that no matter how smart and how brilliant we are. We can't replicate what the human body can do. No. So the best thing we can do is facilitate the body to do what it was meant to do, what it spent thousands and ten thousand, hundreds of thousands of years doing. And so what are the keys and the ingredients, which I absolutely love what you're talking about. And, you know, I am into the whole biohacking and doing the Ben Greenfield and trying to take it to the next level. Well, that's supplementary. You can get 95%, 99% of your peak performance just from the basics. It's eating right. It's sleeping. Vitamin right. D, it's sunlight. It's, it's right, right. It's so easy. And I think yeah. so then what I take away from that, and this is something that I've tried to make the shift as well in my life. And I'm, I love to hear you talking about this is it's really a holistic approach to natural living, you know? And so we talk about getting natural sleep or you're inside too much. Well, part of the problem is it's almost as though we're introducing too much of an artificial world. So we talk about blue light from screens. That's artificial light. That's not the natural sunlight. And that messes up your sleep. And that messes up. Right. Your... And it messes up your hormones. Because this isn't what our body and then has you're been more designed hungry. to and do. And then you... there's all these things. Exactly. That we're not. It's like it's right in front of us. And we're like, oh, how come I don't feel good? Well, what's normal about how you're living? You're not moving. You're watching TV all day. You're eating a Snicker bar three times a day. And you're drinking like Coca-Cola. Like what's normal about that? What's natural about that? So obviously, obviously you're going to, you know, feel off, but just, just one thing I got to say it. And somebody please check the science, but I heard this in the last two weeks or so. And you know, when we, you said, cause we get a cut, remember you just said that you, you mm -hmm. get a cut and we have a reaction. Like, you know how animals, whenever they're hurt or whether they start licking their wounds, like they're licking it. Well, there's something in our saliva that's made to coagulate blood faster <laughs> to help us. But like, that's just to tell you how the human body or, or all animals were all made to like be self-sufficient. Like we're made to like, okay, this is what we do. This happened. Okay. This is what we do. You know, we're right. kind of just moving away from that. I feel like the biohacking world is just bringing us back to our ancestral, ancestral way of living and just going back to our roots and the basics and the fundamentals and, and goes back to the system I was talking about, but just goes back to fundamentals, how, you know, human beings have been living for how many years? Millions of years? <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. I will say that one caveat and the reason why I am pro supplements and I reason why I think some of this biohacking is necessary is because I think it is impossible for us to return to a truly natural world because we live in such an artificial and advanced world. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so when you look at, even if it's just talking about like electromagnetic radiation, because we got Wi-Fi, we got cell phones everywhere. If you're right. talking about, you got the blue light everywhere you go in any office building, any work environment, especially in a modern day remote working environment with the pandemic and who knows what the next five ten sure. years will look like. You look like pollution, the way the environment has changed. I think the world and the life that humanity was accustomed to living in and the way our bodies have built up, that doesn't exist anymore. So that's why I think there is still a place for supplementation and for certain biohacking as a way to try and overcome the excess of toxins and the excess of, you know, pollutants that maybe we're dealing with. And I yeah. think this is an argument I first heard from, it was, I was listening to Paul Saladino, who I know you've talked to before, and he was for talking sure. with Dave Asprey and they were talking about, 
you know, it was, it was a classic carnivore argument of the carnivore diet, which I think we're going to talk about right away. And it was the whole sure. thing in one of the arguments against it. it was like, oh, well, you need to supplement doing this. Or maybe it was like anti-vegan, you need to supplement this. And he's saying like, listen, it's not about the diet. The reason is the reality is, is that a lot of people do have deficiencies in different nutrients, in different important, you know, vitamins and micronutrients in their body. And it, a lot of it is because of the environment in the world we live in. Like living in the world in 2020 is a lot different than living in the world a thousand years ago or 10,000 years ago. For sure. But I think there is still a place for that. But at the end of the day, the most bang for your buck is going to come from that basic holistic living. Yeah. I, I mean, I can't argue against what you're saying. It's, it's, and I'm not here to argue. I completely <laughs> agree with you. Like if you, if you do your best to go back to those holistic ways of living, ancestral ways of living, how we've been doing it for, you know, millions of, if you try, you do your best, your chance of feeling better than, you know, the standard American or somebody that, you know what I'm talking about? Like, just, if you do those steps, you, you have a little drive to try and get better in those little aspects of your life. I think you're going to, you're way better off. Yeah. I, I mean, that's completely. just my opinion. Yeah, no, I, I 100% agree with you. So now let's talk a little bit about the carnivore diet. And so this is something I've been experimenting with for, it's been about three, a little bit over three weeks so far. So I'm still early, How early stages in the carnivore. I feel great, to be honest. I <laughs> I did binge on some some good old Christmas baking over the holiday. So I lost a couple of days, but I've honestly felt a lot better. And previously I've done ketogenic diet before and felt really good on low carb, essentially just eliminating a lot of, you know, the different grains or plant foods that are, you know, I don't want to get too carried away and get into an argument here, but more toxic just by nature. If you, mm -hmm. a, a great book for people to read is the plant paradox by uh, Dr. Stephen Gundry, I believe. And then obviously some of the work by Paul Saladino and Sean Baker, you know, on the carnivore diet. And, but the, one of the biggest things where I've been really getting interested about the idea of a carnivore diet is trying to go back to discovering what is the most ancestral diet. And I know my heritage comes from Northern Europe. And so when I think about what would going back generations of Northern European typically eat. I mean, I know they weren't eating these massive quinoa bowls with 14 different vegetables on it, like nice garnish, like a vegan thing. And I don't want to, they I don't want to go anti-vegan. They didn't I don't have those? Go pro, no, I don't think they did. They I mean, didn't I don't know. I, was, bowls? I, I don't Come know. On. I wasn't around, but, um, and you know, I have tried vegan too. And I did a full, it wasn't that long. It's only about a full month full of full vegan. And then about three or four months where I did about 90% plant-based. So I've tried to experiment with both ends and I have felt good in different ways. Um, but I know you have been doing carnivore and I, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's been maybe nine or 10 months now that you've been on a carnivore yeah, diet. Ever since I came back from Germany, I told myself I, I, I started that. And I think I'm going to say it was beginning of March or something like that. Okay. I so I don't want to try and explain too much because I'm still at the beginning stages. So I would love if you could share with people what got you interested in carnivore, what were some of the ideas and reasons behind it, how you implement it and how it's changed your life and how you feel about it. If you don't mind just sharing kind of your thoughts yeah, on that cool carnivore diet. Yeah, that's, that's totally cool with me. I mean, um, one thing I'm going to say before I talk about like kind of the present is, is I've tried everything. <laughs> I've been, I, I had a full year where I was, you know, playing hockey, uh, vegan. I did, uh, I added some fish. I did all these things. I did the, the plant paradox. I read mm -hmm. all those books. Like if you name me a book, probably, <laughs> I probably, I probably read it. So all these things, I, I tried everything. And my, it's funny, my girlfriend laughs at me all the time because she goes, Oh, okay. So this summer, <laughs> this year you did carnivore, but next year, who knows, you know, like when, when right. people get, Oh, really? Is that really what you do for, for nutrition? And I'm like, yeah, that's what I've been doing. She goes, she, she stops me and she goes, well, that's what he's doing now. You know, I, <laughs> just to tell you how I have tried all these things. You said you tried the ketogenic diet. I, I've done it, honestly. So, but there were, there were some different things that happened to me that I realized that, okay, well, in this route, I this is not going to work long term for me. Like, I, I understand that when you go vegan at the beginning, like, you feel unbelievable. All of a sudden, you feel light. You got lots of energy and all that. But I did realize that I cut everything out, you know, like I cut all the vegetable oils. I wasn't eating any, you know, junk food or anything like that. And, you know, oh, I'm vegan. So you go, oh, well, you're way more likely to say, well, I need to really sleep properly because, you know, I'm eating so clean, you know, I'm going to take care of my whole body. So you're exercising a little bit more, you sleep more, you, so all these things are factors, but it doesn't mean it's your nutrition. That's the best factor for, for, you know, how you're feeling. And so my, my, uh, how I was feeling. And there was a few things that was happening with my skin and, you know, my digestion stuff like that kind of went downhill pretty fast. And at, at the same time, I'm a professional athlete. So I always have to have a pulse on, on my performance and how I feel in the game and, and second, third period and overtimes. And, 
important situations and, and how, how my brain's kind of going. Right. And I realized that it wasn't cutting it for me. It was really getting worse and worse. And I ended up having a pretty bad year that year, uh, in this, in this way. And then I started reading a lot. I read a extensively on ketogenic diets and, and more animal based stuff. And, um, I've seen all the documentaries, the game chase, I've seen it, but once you live it and you, you really read up and you, you do more research, you realize it's a little bit flawed and, and there's, there's some other questions that need to be answered. I'm not saying it's not for any, it shouldn't be for everybody or what, what am I trying to say here? Like it should be nobody should do it. You know, it could be done. Like if you want to be vegan, you know, Merry Christmas and you work like that's fantastic. I'm honestly super happy. That's great. But everybody's different. Everybody reacts in a certain way. And for me, when I started educating myself on the benefits and animal-based nutrition, and I started talking to uh, Dr. Paul Saladino and asking him questions, and uh, I've had the chance to interview him uh, recently and it was really good to get knowledge from him. And, and I've talked to Dr. Sean Baker about this and read his books on that and asked questions around. And I said, you know what? And I've been wanting to do this for the last year, but I didn't want to do it mid season. So I said, you know, as soon as the season's done, I'm going to, I'm going to jump on it and, and then we'll see how I feel. And I never looked back because after the first two weeks of just that adjustment, it's, it's honestly all been uphill. Uh, every part, my skin has been better than before uh digestion is you know super easy now energy levels are unbelievable you know it, it, it's it's man it's every aspect just feels much better than other uh, any other diet i've done and i'm not eating that many carbohydrates and i'm eating a lot of animals based nutrition and uh it's worked really well for me so i had issues before and maybe you were talking about how it was all the, the, the little plant kind of toxins and stuff like that, that are kind of defense mechanisms and stuff like that. And once I eliminated those, I, uh, I saw some pretty major improvements in, in my overall kind of performance, because that's, that's my, that's the bare minimum for me. If my performance is good and on the ice, that's good enough for me. So, right. <laughs> you know, so, uh, that's, that's what I base myself on. And ever since I, I, I'm, I feel really dialed in. So, uh, I had a good game this year and I was, First time I played kind of, if we want to say it that way, carnivore and um, went pretty good. Pre-game meal was not like it used to be. <laughs> yeah, no, well, you definitely did good and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you had 36 saves on 37 shots in a, in a quick W. I think one so. less, one less of each. One less? Oh, okay. Well, one still, less of each. still pretty good. I think it was like yeah, 972 yeah, nine, or something. Pretty good though. Yeah. And it's one game. It's one game. Exactly. I had a good game. Small I sample size, but it, but it was a very good game, but you've been feeling good, which is the most important thing. And you know, I love what you said about the whole idea that there is not necessarily one right diet for everyone because we are so unique and through biochemical individuality. So what works exactly for you might not work exactly for me or for whoever's listening. And that's okay. So the key though, is we're trying to optimize our diets to ourselves to optimize our performance. And you found a lot of success. Now, another thing I wanted to bring up is, and for people who are interested in learning a lot more about carnivore, obviously Dr. Sean Baker and Dr. Paul Saladino are great resources and there's a ton of other ones. But, Diana, uh, like Rob Wolf, Diana Rogers, all these, all these people wrote right. some really amazing You're right. It's a long list, but I think a lot of people get confused um, when they think about carnivore and thinking, is it exclusively animal products? Am I allowed to eat plant products? And I know there are different tiers. And for example, in Carnivore Code with Dr. Paul Saladino, he has like five or six different tiers of like what you are allowed. And, yeah, but you I know, honestly, I hate it when there's all like, okay, this tier, this tier, like, honestly, like, if you like, if you want to eat broccoli that night and you've been doing nine months of carnivore like go like you're right. gonna be fine <laughs> if i have a bowl of rice now okay i haven't had in a long time if i have it I'm pretty sure i'm not gonna die because i've done that <laughs> like i it's gonna be fine like there's so much black and white it's always like this team or that team i honestly hate that it it honestly shouldn't be uh, that way like there's nuance and everything there's there's you said it like everybody reacts differently to me, this works for the guy next to me. It might work for him as well. The girl next, it might work for her as well, but you can, you can make some little changes that work for you. And, and you might do 95%, you know, animal nutrition where it's like, like red meat and lamb and, and, and bison and all these other animals. 
And all of a sudden you say, you know what, let me go have a salad. That's totally fine. You know? And the thing that I don't really like about this kind of conversation is everybody kind of is like, oh, well, you've been doing this. You can't, you can't have this in your diet. Well, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm allowed to have a cheesecake yeah. if I want. To. It's fine. It's yeah. Oh, okay. hundred percent. And I think in my future, I want to develop and I, I love, cause this is going to tie back into the start of our conversation. You talk about a system. So my journey that I'm right on right now is experimenting with every possible diet. I just got my microbiome tested with biome. Yeah, I'm I saw sure that. If you've been able to do that as well. And I'm on a no. mission to try and figure out, you know, what is my optimal diet, but ultimately it's about building a system. So exactly what you talked about at the start for being a high performance, what is my framework of what will give me the best chance to feel good and to live a long, healthy life. But from that point on, that's not set in stone. Like, for example, you said, if you want to have a piece of cheesecake, like, you know, when I'm older, when I'm a parent, if I have a daughter and she wants to have cake on her birthday and she wants me to have it with her, I'm going to have a piece of cake. Like, Dude, I know it's full of sugar Mexico, and oil. If, right? if you go to Mexico in an all-inclusive with your girlfriend and family and, you know, they're like, hey, do you want a coconut? Yeah. You know, you know like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You're about the tree. Do you want, you know, a fresh pineapple? We just went to pick it this morning. Yeah, sure. You know, like it's, it's okay. It's okay. Like all these people, like vegans are really going hard against like, this is bad for, this is bad for you. Is all these things that aren't like really well founded, you know, on the other side. And, and then uh, the people that eat meat go against the vegans and are like, no, you shouldn't be doing this. It's bad for this, this, this. It's honestly like r- do your own research. Okay. Mm-hmm. Try and make sure that you get unbiased information though first, because a lot of it is a lot of the information is biased and, 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 and I'm not saying, I think it's pretty objective. It's not subjective, but on, on the vegetable side and vegetable oils and, and, and junk food and, and the vegan kind of um, like the, 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 the tag they put on all these foods and packaged foods that they have that, Oh, this is vegan. So it's gotta be good for you. Like, that's, there's a lot of stuff to unpack there. There's not a lot of it is really, really good for you. There's a lot of processed foods in there. There's a lot of junk food. There's a lot of extra sugar. There's a lot of other things that, okay, yeah, it's vegan, but doesn't mean it's a fresh celery that you, you know, like it doesn't mean like it's fresh produce, you know, Mm -hmm. you're going to have a way better time with fresh foods than, you know, packaged processed vegan labeled foods, you know, on the other side, you got animal food. So I don't know if I di- just digress there, but what I'm saying is there's, there's a lot to unpack. It's not just yes. a war one for the other. Just make sure you do your research on what really is the true kind of culprit here. And from what I've read and talked to experts that are much smarter than me and that have way more knowledge than me and done much more school and education than I have, mainly it's, you know, vegetables, seed oils that are all over and extra sugar and everything and processed foods, man, all these processed foods, it's, it's a lot of garbage out there. We got to be careful. Yeah, no, I agree with you completely on that, especially, and I've had this conversation with people before. I want to clarify that there's a difference between being vegan and eating whole food plant-based because I would argue that you can huge different. It's unbelievable. You can be vegan and do it to a T, but if you're getting those fake meat patties and they're full of, like you said, those processed seed oils, those processed vegetable oils and all this other garbage, I mean, processed food. And this is what I I do love about the nutrition argument when people have it is that whether you're on full carnivore animal based nutrition, or you're on full plant-based nutrition, everyone, I don't think I've ever listened to an expert or read a book that uh, disagrees that processed foods are the enemy. And it comes to like the processed oils, the added refined sugars. I mean, you take all that, if you're eating a whole food and there are obviously different tiers, right? Like if you have a grass fed animal that has, you know, a different level of quality than if you get some mass produced, like, you know, grain fed animal that's been poorly raised on a farm. Like there's a difference between regenerative farming and like mass produced. Huge difference. So, I mean, and that's on both sides for nutritionally. It's not a huge different nutritionally, but right. Nutritionally, environmentally, that's a huge difference. So there are obviously it's a sliding scale um, for both sides now. Yeah, Exactly. Well, it's like, just like we just said, you know, like, you're saying like mass produced versus grass fed. Okay. Well, nutritionally, it's not huge. Difference. There is a difference. It's not huge, but mm-hmm. environmentally and ethically, that's a huge difference. Oh, no, that's a huge difference. Yeah. And that's, but that's a whole that's other why it's all nuance there. You know, it's not just black and white. It's, it's you got to dig a little bit deeper. You got to ask a few questions. You, you, you got to read the, 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 the the right information, you know, not that validates mm-hmm. what you think, you know, you got to read the, the, the objective numbers that are out there. Right. And so this leads me into the next thing I want to talk about is you have made a huge emphasis in this conversation, talk about learning and providing yourself with information and doing the research and making decisions based on objective information. And now with your company, Living Sisu, 
one of the main objectives is to help people educate on information, what's available, what's the best for their life, healthy living, and of course, provide increased accessibility to information sure. and to products. So I would love for you, I only did a brief intro at the start to talk a little bit about Living Sisu, what it's all about, how it started and how it can help people. Oh man, and this has been such a cool journey so far uh, with Living Sisu. Um, first of all, for, for, for people that don't know what we're talking about, Sisu is a Finnish word, it's a Finnish concept, and it's, it's, it's very, very ingrained in their culture. And what it really represents is resiliency, the concept of going through adversity with tenacity and perseverance and, and guts and grit and inner strength. So there's, there's, there's so many things you could read on the, the Sisu and how it's so important to them on, for example, when there's, there's no more hope and you feel you, you're at the bottom of the barrel and, and you, you don't know where to go. You don't know what to think. Like a lot of these people refer to the Sisu. That's really going to help you. Like you turn to that inner strength that in your, in your core, that determination we all have inside, that's your Sisu and really powerful term there where you can unpack a lot of words. Like I was saying, determinations, resilience, tenacity, perseverance, guts, grit, inner strength, inner, you know, like will all these things. We, we, we put this together and we said, you know, living Sisu, you got to live your Sisu every day because all of us go through adversity. All of us go through some tough times. Look at 2020, for example. I don't know if you guys had a tough time with that one, but I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying is living Sisu is everywhere. You have to show determination. You have to show guts. Sometimes you have to show a little perseverance. You got to push through that pain sometime. And we wanted to bring that to the world of sports because uh, us three, the, the, the founders of living Sisu were sports guys. And we wanted to make sports more accessible and give the right information to people on why it's so important to be physically active every day. You know, like it, it seems obvious, but why, you know, like, why do we have to move every day? Why do you get into sports? Why, why, why are your kids going to benefit from, from getting into hockey or tennis? What are the values are, they're going to get behind um, participating in team sports? For example, what are the lessons you're going to learn? You know what I mean? And, and, and the role models you're going to have because of that. So it's a lot of big concept in sport that I've been around my whole life. And I want to spread more of that, just sports <laughs> activity, physical activity, sports in general. We want to, educate people on that and make it more accessible because it is expensive, right? Like sports in general are expensive and we want to make that accessible with our partners. That's one of our two main pillars. And the third pillar is really the activate pillar of living Sisu, which is creating great events for people to really participate in these things. I'll give you an example, like big spike ball tournament or golf tournaments and, and uh, hikes on in the mountains and going out on yoga retreats and stuff like that. So these are all things we're looking into developing for, for, for our members. It's free to join. And we're having so much fun, man, because it just created a, a big community of people that come together for sports and trying to share the right information and just having a good time kind of going through challenges and, and you must have heard this quote there. It's, uh, I, I might be misquoting, but I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be close enough. Like life's about like going through challenge to challenge with enthusiasm or like failure to failure with enthusiasm. You, you, you know that quote? I, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know that quote, but I like it. Um, man, some, I think somebody might have a, a, a light. Somebody said that at some point. Right, I can't. Right. Okay. <laughs> and by going from challenge to challenge or failure to failure with enthusiasm, you know, that when you're not alone, you've got a community behind you. Everybody's kind of pushing toward that goal. We're all kind of searching for our inner Sisu. That's fun. And we're having a lot of fun with, with the whole community. And uh, thanks, man. Thanks for talking about it. I think it's, uh, it's going to help a lot of people, you know, enjoy sports and make it more accessible. Yeah, no, that's absolutely amazing. When I first saw it, I, I was super impressed with it. And I was wishing that I could come out and join one of those, you know, activities or retreats, but it's a little difficult these days. So I'm, I'm sure you've been kind of held back a little bit in what you can do this year, but I'm sure you have big plans in the work. So, you know, going back to you talk about products and you haven't, or different partners. And I think you, I don't know if I was reading this online or if you just said it's like 80 plus partners or something like you guys have incredible, yeah. like, could you even give a little bit more? So people have an idea of what are the different partners that you have and the types of products available that are more accessible, that are going to help people and how it's going to help people that become living Sisu members, you know, be more accessible to sport and live better lives. Right. So our motto right off the bat is activate your lifestyle. So we want to partner with a wide variety of, of, of 
professionals, people, uh, places like shops and gyms, but also, you know, brands and products. So it's, it's, it's a big umbrella of sports, <laughs> right? And whoever, you know, gets involved in that and can contribute to the member and give value to them, this is who we want to be partners with. So it could be from uh, a gym in your local area that, that, you know, or, or physiotherapy or, or uh, even health and wellness, like massages and all these things. These are all important in sport. These are all important in our lives and, 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 you know, like stress management and all these things. So that's part of the CSU as well. So it could be gyms, products, like, uh, anything from foam rollers to stocking up on, on the best gym equipment in the world, uh, recovery equipment to, uh, actual sports equipment and, and sports stores from, and, and, and now people are wondering, like, is this just for hockey? This is just a hockey guy talking three hockey guys started this. Honestly, it's really not We're we're going through all sports and bringing all these people together, uh, professionals, healthcare professionals. And it's, uh, so the big umbrella of sports that we want to bring all together and create, create that, that, that kind of um, interlaced uh, bond between all the sports together, because at the end of the day, there's one thing we have in common is in any sport you, you need Sisu to go through. I love that because you have, you go through adversity. It doesn't matter what sport you are, what level you're in, who you are, what you do, or what position you play. You're going to hit a wall. You're going to, you're going to hit an opponent. That's tough. You're going to go through a tough time. You're going to have an injury, but at the end of the day, if you're part of the living Sisu community, somebody's going to have your back and it's going to be accessible to you and you're going to have the right information. So that's, that's our goal. And uh, yeah, I hope that kind of summarizes as best I can. Uh, I'm, I'm also, yeah, ah, that's it. I'll stop right there. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's amazing. And honestly, for people who aren't you know, familiar. I have looked a little bit and I've seen some of, you know, your partnerships that you have. And it's not just little mom and pop stores. I mean, this is a huge community with some major partners and some major brands. And I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you have whoop is one of your partners. Is that correct? Uh, no, I, oh, yeah. I, you know, oh, I've, you're a big supporter I've been of a by huge the... fan of whoop, but yeah. uh, hopefully, hopefully soon they're going to be. Okay. Well, well, we'll have to pass soon. this along, right. So that we can get whoop <laughs> on board, but yeah, whoop, come on guys. Give me a call back, please. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Help out. Zach. I've been a huge fan. I've been a huge fan. Yeah. I've been a huge fan too. And I, I talk about it a lot on some of my podcasts and just with everyone, I'm constantly telling people all the time to take a look at whoop because it For is sure. crazy. But anyways, I don't want to go too far. So I'll have one more question for you to close off. But first thing I want to ask one you to tell though. people. Okay, of course. Yeah. One more thing though is, is, is like, oh, okay, well, you know, how much does this cost? How much guys, this is free, right? It's honestly free. The accessibility pillar of living Sisu is serious. We really want to make this available to the masses. Right. And that's why you have all these, these discounts with, with gyms and products and recovery things and, and performance equipment and clothes and all these things. You, you give this as a member of the community because it's important to us to make that accessible to people. I, I just needed to really, really emphasize on that because yeah. the fact that it's free is huge and uh, many, everybody can benefit from it from mom and pops to grandma, grandpa to, to your kids. Everybody can benefit from being a living CSU member. Yeah, no, that's absolutely awesome. And I'm glad you stopped me to, to bring that up. So <laughs> sorry that, about that. No, I, no, I on have that a history note. of cutting people off. I need to get better at that. <laughs> No, that's okay. That's because you're you're used to just being stuck in the crease all the time. I know what it's like. We go crazy in there sometimes, right? <laughs> Maybe that's yeah, you're just on an old little blue island out in the ice. But um, so where can people find you? Not just you personally, but Living Sisu. Where can they get in touch? Learn more. I'd love for you to just tell everyone where they can find out more and get in touch with Zach Bucali. So yeah, I mean, you can honestly, I, I, personally, I pride myself on replying to everybody I talk to. Uh, I'm not, I'm not some big superstar. I'm just the, I'm just a guy. If you have a question, I love to talk about this, uh, anytime on Instagram, you know, Twitter, anything like that. I'm, I'm super accessible and, um, living C's, you know, living com. living C S S I S U.com. Uh, everything is there from memberships, uh, from free to premium to all these things. And, um, I'm not supposed to say this, but we're, we're still just tweaking our app. It's out. Like you can download the app, just, just tweaking it at the last second. There's just a couple of things that we got to fix, but if you're out there, you want to try out the living Sisu app, it's, 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 it's functional. You go ahead and, and, and explore with that. And if there is issues, you, you, you email us, we'll fix it. But uh, at the end of the day, like we're, we're really working hard on this and it's been super fun. I'll be honest with you, Braden, like 
it's been been really fun to work with this community of people and my two partners are just these guys are unbelievable these guys are the most dedicated people to just try and help and uh, I, I'm real grateful I get to be part of a group like that because I'm, I'm still playing like I, I have other responsibilities like I, I have a professional hockey career that I have to focus 100% of my attention on and I'm really really like uh, heart and soul into it um, 100% I want to play hockey till you know 35 40 years old at least mm -hmm. right so this is a great group I'm a part of. I'm real grateful for that. And uh, you can really find me anywhere on the social and uh, yeah, reach out, give me a question. I'm, I'm all, I'm all ears. Yeah. And I can vouch for that too, because he's responded to a lot of my questions as well. Um, very, and very timely too. And for those of you who can't see, I have the luxury of being able to see you on the camera here, but your enthusiasm comes through your voice and just through your <laughs> face. Like I can see that you genuinely are passionate about this and you see a greater oh, vision man, and a greater future. That's, that's just me, man. Everything I do, we got to go, we got to go hard. I, I don't know what it is. We, we got to do it right. We got to do it hard. I love that. Okay. So to close off here, what I wanted to ask from you is for the viewers for my show is kind of focused around optimizing your health, your happiness and your performance. So I'd love for you just based on your experience to give one piece of advice for people to optimize their health, one piece of advice to optimize their happiness and one piece of advice to optimize their performance. Jesus. Okay. Let's do it. Um, for me, optimize your health. It's, it's not just one thing. It's a combination of a couple that we talked about it at the beginning. And these, these are easy you know, for me, <laughs> you listen to yourself, trust me, you're going to feel better. Just go to sleep. And that's it. If you're <laughs> always tired, means you got to sleep more, you know, and that's it. And, and put down the chips, stop eating the processed foods and uh, stretch out, move your body a little bit. And that's it. I'm telling you, you're going to feel good. Like, love it. Work out a little bit, go exercise, go hike outside go in the woods and walk around. Trust me, that's the best health tip I can give to anybody because there's a significant difference when you come back home from a hike or whatever, you have a good night's sleep. This is a significant difference that you can feel. And people who have experienced this know, and if you haven't, do it because you're going to feel unreal. Awesome. All right. So and now what was the second one? What do second I Second one was happiness. Happiness. To be happy. Wow. That's uh that's a good one. I to me I, I'm all about my family. And I don't know if this is uh the Italian values coming out but honestly I'm all about my family, my sisters, uh, my 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 father, my mom. These are super important people to me and uh, I've been, I've been with my girlfriend for 3 years now and we have such a great thing going. I'm super grateful to have these people and my advice is and and also my dog Stella, mm, of course, that's a huge, huge source of happiness for me. Like I, I miss her and uh, just my family. Once you spend time with your family and, and you make connections and, and I'll, I'm going to say this, I realize that a lot of people have some issues in the family. I've had issues in my family. I mean, it's uh, still an Italian family. We have issues here and there. Everybody does, right? Everybody does. Uncles, cousins, everybody has issues, right? But at the end of the day, if you can, can if you can create some solid like connections with either really, really important friends or your family that you can connect at a, you know, at a deeper level, like that's going to bring you some happiness because at the end of the day, what else do we got? Exactly. I love you know it. what I mean? Like what else do you got? You got your health. That first question you have, you have your mm -hmm. health, but then after that you have the people around you. So surround yourself with people that you, you care about and, and you, you'd, you'd go through to war with, you know, surround mm -hmm. yourself with people you'd freaking go to war with. And trust me, that's going to make you happy because that creates, that creates that, that sense of, of belonging. And, and that's super important. I find yeah. and, and, and in my amazing. experience, I, I feel like that's super important. Yeah, I mean, that's amazing. you see that with athletes all the time when they retire and, and they're a little bit lost. They're like, man, like I used to spend time with my brothers every day, mm -hmm. every day. You know what I mean? And then you feel that you, it's different. You don't feel as good. Right. So that's a huge part of happiness. And, and, and that would be my advice. Find a, a circle of people that you'd, you'd freaking go through a brick wall for. And I'm telling you, you're going to, you're going to spend some good times with these people. Awesome. So the last one, we've talked about this a lot. So, you know, it could be anything, uh, but if there was just one thing you could tell people to optimize their performance, what would it be? Optimize your performance, create a system. I love it create a system. And that doesn't come overnight. Uh, for me, it, it, it took years, honestly, 
took years of watching myself on video and watching it aimlessly and aimlessly and aimlessly until one day I noticed a little something. I said, Oh, okay. And somebody, a coach told me about something and I heard from something else from another coach. And, and I like to write a lot of stuff down in journaling and stuff. And, and I don't know if this is part of your, your optimal kind of performance stuff, but for me, I like to journal stuff and write stuff and kind of analyze things. And the last two, two, three years, I've been writing a lot about my performances and what I find and what I feel and what I, what works, what doesn't work. Uh, kind of, uh, I love, I love David Goggins and his mindset mm -hmm. and all that. And after action reports, and, and I've written a lot of those, a lot of those. And over time you see trends and I find that helps me optimize my performance because with all these things that you write down, the picture becomes clearer. The more you, you add a piece to the puzzle, you add a piece to the puzzle, and all of a sudden you got a system that says, oh, okay, when I do this, this, and this, and I don't do this and this, boom, everything clicks all of a sudden. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying this is like a magic recipe, but this has worked for me. And I believe that if you really look at yourself and you, you write it down, you write a system, what really works for you, you know what I mean? What really works for you and you're honest with yourself, you're going to create a system that's successful. You're going to eliminate the little uh, mistakes. And then all of a sudden you're going to have something that's going to optimize your performance. And optimizing to me, it just means create something that's just a little bit better than others. And if you can have a system and rules in place that creates that 1%, 2%, 3% edge, you've optimized. That's that's the way I've, I've, I see it. I love it. That's amazing. So just to review for the people who are listening to optimize your health, it's all about just listening to your body, eat when you're hungry, sleep when you're tired, get out in nature. <laughs> Pretty awesome. simple, no? It's I mean... super simple. And this is awesome because this is the whole idea is we want information to be simple and digestible and for people to be able to take and apply it. Happiness, spend time with family, the people that are most important to you and be grateful for them. But I will say this though, because now we could go right back into the <laughs> rabbit hole of nutrition, because if you say you listen to your body, a lot of people... And, and myself included, I just sit down and eat ice cream all day. Yeah. And I love that because I would just go deeper, deeper. And, and my body would say, you know what? I love ice cream. Let's do it again. And then go again and again. So at the end of the day, you, you need to have that discipline. Right. But when I say, listen to your body, listen to your body. Like when you eat ice cream, do you feel good after? Yes, exactly. Probably not. Okay. Well, maybe you got to push through that. Oh, I'm really craving that. You, you know what I'm saying? That's what I mean by listen yeah. to your body. Because at no, the end of the I day, agree. there's that guilt in the back that says, okay, I could eat ice cream. I would love it, but I'm going to sleep like garbage. I'm going to wake up, you know, almost like you had a hangover from sugar. You know what I mean? Like, listen to your body for real, <laughs> for <laughs> yeah, real. Yeah, you yeah, know? Not just listen to the one thing your body's telling you. Listen yeah, to what's, what's your behind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Zach, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I know you're in Washington right now. Get ready for camp. So I wish you all the best. And I, I know we're all excited to watch you go out there and play and see where the next, you know, thank you, sir. Years, the been, next 10, 15 years of your pro career. It's honestly goes. been a crazy journey and uh, it's been up and down and a lot of down. It's been a lot of down, but that's why I resonate with the CSU principles because, and I wanted to get involved because I need to live that every day. I need to live that determination, that perseverance, that tenacity, that resilience. And uh, my career hasn't always been sunshine, uh, it was for a while, but then I got hit with some pretty tough challenges that sometimes I didn't have the answers. And I went into a deep hole, deep, dark hole, but I'm really climbing out of it. And I feel really confident now. And I feel really great because I've, I went through those experiences. And that's why the CSU principles re resonate so much with me because you go through adversity, but what are you going to use to get out of that? It's that inner strength. It's, it's what's really deep inside that, 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 that primal kind of tenacity and perseverance that comes out and uh yeah i'm really excited about this camp this whole season in general I, I'm, I'm really optimistic even though there's no fans right now and all that but really optimistic i real i feel real good i really appreciate you having me on your show brother it's been quite the conversation and i'll be honest there's some things i never talked about before openly uh where people can really just hear what's coming out of my head because I'm not an expert, but these are just, you know, my opinions and what I really believe from, from the things I've read and the people I've talked to that are much more, and I say much smarter than me. Yeah. So, uh, that's, <laughs> hey, I'm that's in really the exact important. same boat as you. I, I, I got no PhD by my name. I just love to read, learn and talk to people. And exactly. you know what? You're definitely a wealth of knowledge. You've got great experience. You've got great enthusiasm. Zach, I've, I've really loved it. I want, encourage everyone to check out Living Sisu, follow along Zach Thank and everything he's doing, you know, on social media and in his pro career. 
and everything else. And you know, you set the bar high for future interviews on my show here. Awesome. Well, you know, the, the bar has to be high. And if Always. I didn't set it high, I didn't do my job. You got to set it high for other people. I love it. All right. Well, thank you so much again. We'll hopefully catch up again soon, but take care and good luck. Thank in you, camp. Brother. I'm really grateful. Thank you for this, man. To discover more, the full transcript of this episode with all citations is available on the website, and you can also contact me on social media with any questions or comments. If you found this episode useful or think that it may help someone else, I encourage you to pass it along. Thank you all for joining me on this journey to lifelong health, happiness, and higher performance. And remember, always be grateful, love yourself, and serve others.